We are going live today. And we are going to another topic. Today, we're going to be talking about how Jesus is not God. We really want to deal with that. We really want to deal with that. A lot of our people are worshiping the creature more than the creator. All right. And I want to read Isaiah 9 and 6. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, these titles, okay, are very important titles, okay? And I want to get the other scripture, okay? And this is when the name Emmanuel is mentioned. This is going to be Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now let's keep in mind, there's not one time in the Bible where Jesus is called Emmanuel. Now with all those scriptures, make sure you are taking good notes. We want to go to Isaiah Chapter 6. We want to go to Isaiah chapter 6. And we want to start at verse 9. I'm going to read the King James first. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Now, I want to go to another translation. I want to go to another translation, something easy to read. I'm going to go to the contemporary English version. Then the Lord told me to go and speak this message to the people. You will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look but never see. Now, I want to go into verse 10. And I'm going to read the King James first. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. He is instructed, Isaiah the prophet, to make the heart of the people callous, to make their hearts dull, okay, and to make their ears heavy. Now, what is exactly that going into? What is that going into? I want to go to another translation. God's word translation. Make these people close-minded. Plug their ears Shut their eyes. Now, he is telling Isaiah. He's telling Isaiah to plug the people's ears. Now, this is, this is some deep stuff right here. He's telling Isaiah to make these people's ears heavy. Now, I want to go to some additional translations and get further understanding on that. The Douay Rheims Bible translation reads, Blind the heart of this people 
and make their ears heavy. Now, this is the same book we just read. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Now, think about that. Isaiah was told to make the ears of the people heavy. Now, we know that God is God, and there's no God beside him, and I want to get that scripture. This is going to be Isaiah chapter 45, and this is going to be verse 5. It says, I am the Lord. There is none else. There is no God beside me. Let's focus on that. I am the Lord and there is none else. But when we go back to what we just read in Isaiah 9, 6, a child is born, a son is given. His name is going to be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Now, it keeps going. It says the everlasting father. All these titles. And keep in mind, Isaiah was told to blind the heart of the people. He was told to make the people's ears heavy. Now, I'm going to go to Genesis 49, 24 real quick. It says, but his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the mighty hands, okay, by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob, rather, okay? God is called the mighty God. He's called the mighty God of Jacob. But here we have in scripture that a child is going to be called the mighty God. That right there is a double standard. Now, amazingly, this is in the same book. This is in no other books, okay? Right now, this is Isaiah. Isaiah was told to blind the hearts of the people, okay? Now, I want to get a scripture, okay, from the Bible. When God authorized a lying spirit. Let's get that. God authorized a lying spirit. This is going to be 1 Kings chapter 22. And I want to start at verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. Verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Now, think about that for a quick second. Just think about that for a quick second. Now, verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Verse 22. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets and he said and he is God God said thou shalt persuade him 
and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Verse 23. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning you. So here we have in scripture, God authorizing a lying spirit. Now we know that God creates good and he creates evil. The Bible says, I, the Lord, do all these things. Okay. Many people want to cherry pick the Quran with the scripture that says Allah is the best of schemers, the best of planners. But they love this translation. That Allah is the best of deceivers. And here we have in the Bible, in the Christian's Bible, where God is authorizing a lying spirit. Now we got to go back to Isaiah. Now Isaiah is talking about a child that's going to be called Emmanuel. He's talking about a child that's going to be called mighty God. He's talking about a righteous servant. Whom is going to be made a offering for sin. So the strongest scripture the Christians have about Jesus being crucified is in the same book. Isaiah was told to make the ears of the people heavy. To make their hearts blind. Okay. So the strongest evidence you have of Jesus being crucified is with the same messenger, God said, go and mislead them. Go, make their hearts heavy. Go and darken their eyes. I'm going to get there for you. I'm going to show you more scripture on that. Okay, this is going to be Psalms 69 verse 22. Now, this is the King James Version. Let their table become a snare. Now, let's find out what a table is, okay? Because many people want to play dumb to what a table is. Now, this is going to be Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon table that he may run that read of it. So we understand that tables were things that God wrote words on. Remember, he gave Moses tablets of stone, okay? He gave him tablets of stone. So we understand that a table could be a reference to a Bible, to a book, to a scroll, to a tablet, okay? So now we're going to get back to where we was at. We're going to get back to where we was at. This is going to be Psalms 69, and this is going to be verse 22. Let their table become a snare. A snare is a trap. A snare is a trap. And that which should have been for their welfare. Now, many people call the Bible basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what they call it. Okay? So the Bible, okay, that is supposed to be used for your welfare. That same book, okay, that table could be, okay, made a trap as we keep going we'll see we'll see if this lines up with what he told the prophet isaiah peace and blessings be upon him. verse 23 let their eyes be darkened that they see not now if i'm reading the bible correctly god is telling isaiah and he's telling david Okay, let their eyes be a trap. Okay, they're going to see something and it's going to trap them because their eyes are going to be darkened. This was David's prayer. 
Okay? And this is exactly what Isaiah was told by God. To let their eyes be darkened, that they see not. Now, I want to go to another translation. I want to go to another more plain translation. All right. This is going to be. Mm, I want to go to the New Living Translation. Uh, let's go to the English Standard Version. Let their own table before them become a snare. And when they are at peace, let it become a trap. Okay? This is going into deception. Now, remember, we just read about Ahab being deceived. And God was asking, how can we persuade Ahab to fall? And a spirit came forth and said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Now, let's go to Numbers chapter 12 real quick. Let's go to Numbers chapter 12. And this is going to be verse 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord. See, I love scriptures like this. I love scriptures where I know it's God talking. Okay. I love scriptures that say, thus saith the Lord. I love scriptures that say the Lord have spoken. I love concrete evidence that is the most high speaking. Okay. Because everybody does not believe everybody. And although your boy Paul said all scripture is given by God, we know for a fact Everybody ain't trusting every scripture. Okay? So when I go back to verse 6, it reads, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently. And not in dark speeches. Now for those who are not fully picking up on this. He is basically saying with Moses. God spoke face to face with mouth to mouth with. He spoke plain to Moses. He made it simple for Moses. Because Moses was the milk. Moses his law was supposed to be taught to the children. How can you teach the children something difficult? So with the prophet Moses, God spoke plainly to him. But with the other prophets, God spoke in dark speeches. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then, were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So God Almighty, he spoke in dark sentences and he spoke in parables. And I want to get that scripture. He spoke in parables. This is Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 49. Then said I, ah, Lord. They say of me, doth he not speak parables? So God spoke in parables through all the other prophets. He spoke in dark sentences. But with Moses, he spoke plain. Okay, he spoke plain with Moses. So when you go to Isaiah and when you go to Amos and when you go to all these prophets, when you go to all these prophets, all you're doing is, is listening to dark sentences. You're listening to parables. You're listening to something that is not plain. All right? So with all that being established, we're going to go to the famous scripture. This is going to be Isaiah 53, 10. 
Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Now this scripture is the most famous scripture for Christians. In believing that this is talking about Jesus. Jesus' name is not mentioned in Isaiah 53. The Messiah is not mentioned in Isaiah 53. Son is not mentioned in Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, whether we like it or not, is a dark sentence. It is something that is not specific. This is the reason why the Jewish community today believe that if this is read in Hebrew from start to finish, it is speaking of the nation of Israel as a whole and not a individual. OK, but you have a free right. You have a free right to hang yourself. You have a free right to take this scripture and interpret it and interpret it any way you want to. Although Jesus name is not mentioned anywhere in there. OK, and mind you, this is the same prophet who literally was told to make the heart of these people fat. OK, to make their ears heavy, to darken their eyes. Lest they see the truth and be converted. Dealing with this topic now. We talked about how God spoke plainly to Moses. In Numbers 23, 19, it reads, God is not a man. Let that sink in. This is coming from the prophet who was on the mountaintop with the most high. Who seen God's back, okay? Whom God said he spoke plainly with. This man literally is telling us, a matter of fact, God wrote this with his own finger. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So God is telling you, number one, he's not God. And number two, he's not a liar. He's not a man and he's not a liar. He's telling you this. Moses is telling you God is not a man. What's your problem? What is your problem? He's telling you plainly God is not a man. Now keep in mind, Jesus did not call himself the son of God. Jesus called himself the son of man. Jesus called himself the son of man more than anybody. OK, I challenge anybody. And matter of fact, let me put this number in the chat real quick, because we are live and I get excited, but I'm not losing my my place. OK, the number is on the screen. Six, six, one, five, nine, seven, twenty three, seventy six. If you got issues, you want to call in, call on in. Keep in mind. Jesus called himself the son of man more than any other prophet in the entire Bible. He identifies himself as the son of man because he wants you to go to Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken and shall he not make it good? So number one attribute about God is is that he's nothing like his creation. God is not a man. I want everybody to say it with me real quick. Hold on. Let me get y'all unmuted real quick. I want everybody to say it with me. God is not a man. 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 God is not. God is not. The son of man. The son of man. He's not. He's not. Now, I'm going to take you to a... Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Let's put that in there. God is not a man. 
We got to make things simple for a child. God is not a man. And the Christians, they call him the son of God. Well, if he's the son of God, how is he God? That don't make no sense. Either he's God or the son of God or the son of man. Okay? And none of these claims they are making makes any sense. Okay? Especially when we get to a few more scriptures we got coming up. So now we want to go to 1 Samuel 15, 29. This is going to be 1 Samuel 15, 29. And it reads, And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. I'm going to read that again. For he is not a man. Now, for y'all who are listening, okay, y'all know that the Bible says that Samuel, all the words he spoke, God did not let his words touch the ground. So here we have a testimony coming from Moses. Moses said God is not a man. And then we and then we have Samuel. He said God is not a man. That's two powerful testimonies. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established. The problem with you John lovers, you take John chapter 1 and you run with it and you have no other reference in the entire Bible. John is anonymous. Don't nobody even know who John is. John was the last gospel. And in beginning with the first gospel we received, which was Mark, it went from God being, it went from Jesus being less Okay, deity to be a more deity with John. Okay, so we have two powerful witnesses coming from Moses, coming from Samuel, the mule. All right. Now, I want to give some other references. Okay. Now, how could Jesus be God? When the Bible calls Jesus your brother, the Bible calls Jesus your brother. And I have a few references. Now, this is going to be John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God, and your God. So first he's saying, we're brothers. Then he's saying, I'm going to my father and your father. Then he's saying, I'm going to your God and my God. He didn't say, I'm God. He didn't say, he's God. He said, I'm going to my God and your God. See, this is what you need to do right here. You need to take a pair of scissors and you need to start cutting these type of scriptures out of your Bible. Okay? Either you're going to deal with the fact that the Bible has been contaminated, that it's been corrupted, okay? Or you're going to cut these scriptures out because you can't have both worlds. Here we have scriptures of Jesus saying that God is his God and your God. That he is your father and his father. And he called his brothers. His brothers. Now I want to go to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So the Bible is identifying Jesus with his brothers. Jesus is basically saying in this scripture that he is not ashamed to call us his brothers. How is he God if he's our brother? So you're saying that God is our brother? Does that make sense, anybody? Anybody? 
No. no, it doesn't. That doesn't make any sense. How could God be your brother? Now, I'm going to go to verse 12, okay? And it reads, saying, I will declare your name unto my brother. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. So Jesus is saying, I will praise you, God, in the presence of my brothers. So Jesus is praising himself if he's God. Okay, these are huge contradictions. You can't have both. You got to pick one. Okay, these apologetics have been making excuses for scriptures like this for centuries and centuries and centuries. The fact of the matter is there's Bible corruption going on because Jesus is saying, I will praise you, God, in the presence of my brothers. Then I have Matthew 12 and 49. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brother. So you saying God has a mother? You saying God has a mama? And you saying God has a brother? What is wrong with y'all? Let me tell you something. Some of the weakest men in the world, some of the most cowardly, okay, of men are men who identify Jesus as God, okay? You the type of man that when it's time to fight, you want somebody to jump in and help you. You the type. That's surrounded by a bunch of homies, y'all laughing and giggling, and you out there on the streets bringing it out, and, 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 and you want somebody to step in and help you, help you. Majority of you, majority of you are like that. You are sissified. You cannot have nobody holding your hand when it's time to face judgment. You are associating partners with God. You are taking lords in addition to God. And Jesus is saying with his own words, behold, my mother and my brother, how can your brother be God? That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. Now, I got a few more scriptures before we go. OK, because we still going to deal with the scripture where God through Jesus. OK, because I believe Jesus spoke under the inspiration of God. I can't say that about all the other um, writers, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are all anonymous. They are all anonymous, okay? And Jesus said, by the inspiration of God, that my Father is greater than I, okay? We're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with that. Matter of fact, let's get it now. This is going to be John 14, 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. See, this is what the Christians would love to say right here. Well, he said, I and my Father is one. Well, then how come he didn't know what the answer was when the disciples asked if he was going to restore the kingdom to Israel. Okay. How come he doesn't know the time and the hour when he will return? Those are the questions you got to ask. How come when he said be perfect like your father in heaven, he was talking about someone that wasn't where he was at. He was on earth and he was talking about his father in heaven. So that's one scripture in the same book of John. Amazingly, the same book of John, the Christians, man, I'm telling you there. John is the Christians Moses. OK, that's their Moses. They believe God literally wrote the book of John with his own finger. Now I want John 10, 29. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of 
my hand? No. He said, out of my father's hand. You are misinterpreting when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? When Jeremiah was on the scene, he was the prophet whom God's anointing was on. And if the children of Israel would have listened to Jeremiah, they never would have went into captivity. In Ezekiel's day, he was the way, the truth, and the life, okay? He was the messenger of the hour. And when Jesus came, he was the messenger of the hour. But Jesus spoke of a comforter. He spoke of someone that would come after him. It wasn't a ghost. It wasn't a spook. He used the word advocate. He used the word paraclete. He was speaking of a human that would come after him. And we know from the scriptures, Genesis 49 and 10, that the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is the Gentile messenger that is sent as a mercy to all of humanity. Get mad and get mad. Okay? So we dealt with the scriptures where Jesus is confessing that he is not as great as his father. Okay? And we have more to get into. Okay? We're going to pick back up because we are at 30 minutes. But I'm going to let the, the floor be free for those to speak. We're going to pick back up on this. We're going to deal with some more evidence from the Bible pertaining to how Jesus is not God. Okay, you a man worshiper. You a man worshiper. Okay, and that's what you got to deal with. You got to deal with the first five books of Moses. And Moses is going to witness against you. Because he told you in plain English, God is not man. Tear that out your book. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 15 and tear that out. The strength of Israel will not lie. For he is not a man. Tear that out too. When Jesus said that his father is greater than him, tear that out too. Okay? In John chapter 20, when he said, I go to my God and your God, tear that out your book too. All right? Now the floor is open for someone to speak on how they believe Jesus is not God. Well, like I said it last time, I don't believe Jesus is God because the scriptures clearly say it. They're clear as water. And also the, script, um, the Father's Prayer where Jesus says, Our Father who are in heaven. So if he says, Our Father who are in heaven, is he saying, is he praying to himself? No. A lot of people, they just don't get it. And also when Jesus was separating from the disciples and praying to the Father, who was he praying to? To himself? No, he was praying to God. So that's why I know Jesus is not God. That's right. You are correct. You are correct, okay? Anybody else? Anybody else want to speak on how they believe Jesus is not God and we're going to shut it down? Well, there's a lot of scriptures in Matthew and throughout all the gospels that just shows that he's always mentioning God and not himself. He's always saying the Father, the Father, the Father. All right. So simple for a child to get it. Now we about to shut it down, y'all. It's about that time to get any scripts. Is y'all down or not? Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah.